Good morning, everyone. Happy 4th of July and happy last parking lot service, hopefully for ever, <laughs> but we will see. So just a few announcements for you all this morning. Um, we do have fellowship following the service. Um, so if you want to park off to the side after the service is done and come on in, um, the Wallers have provided fellowship for us this morning. Um, Starting next Sunday, we will move to one 9 a.m. service inside the church, and everything will be mask optional. Um, the Mission Trip Youth are collecting um, some items to take as a donation for our mission trip. We leave after church next Sunday, so we'll be doing kind of a send-off and blessing for our group going um, to South Dakota next week. Um, so if you would like to make a donation, you can drop it off or bring it um, to the church and put it in PB's office. Um, if you are watching online and you would love a bulletin, you can go to trinityboysville.com and find a bulletin there. Um, I will leave the rest of the announcements um, up to you all. Um, and we will begin with our confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, 
that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Ezekiel, the second chapter. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The Holy Gospel comes from Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us. Love, forgiveness, and hope are within us. In the name of God, who sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit to show us that we matter and we are loved. Amen. Our gospel reading today certainly packs a punch. In 13 verses, we get two very powerful stories about Jesus' ministry and his journey to the cross. In the first six verses, Jesus has come home to preach, come to his hometown. So, of course, people know him there. They watched him grow up. Jesus' work and successes in neighboring regions lead us to believe that when he reached his hometown, he would be met with cheers and support. But that wasn't the case. As he's teaching in the synagogue, the people begin to question him. Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? The Gospel of Mark says that people took offense to him and to his teachings. So what I'm sure was the expected positive reaction quickly turned negative as the crowd continued to question him. Their reaction seems to surprise Jesus as well. The absence of faith challenged Jesus and his ability to perform healing miracles. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Maybe for those in his hometown, it was hard for them to imagine that someone as ordinary as a carpenter's son could possibly make and do good. So in the last six verses, we see that this rejection and what I'm sure was disappointment in his hometown didn't hinder his mission for long. 
Jesus sends out his disciples on a journey. Jesus had chosen the 12 in chapter 3 of the book of Mark. And since that time, they had been preparing for their own mission. In this gospel specifically, Jesus commands the disciples to take a staff and wear sandals and to not bring a lot that might hinder their journey. So this implies that they were maybe preparing for a long journey. They might have been dependent on hosts and hospitalities in neighboring towns. In the rejection and challenges that Jesus faced, he was in turn preparing his own disciples to face their own rejection and challenges on their journey. He told them that if they encountered that, to simply shake the dust off their feet and continue on. So two different stories rolled up into one gospel reading. But are they really that different? The first is seemingly a story of failure. The second, a story of success. But the two parts stand together and are interconnected. These two stories have something to tell us about God, not only about God and God's power, but about our part in all of that. We learn about the power of faith. We learn about what happens when we face challenges and rejection in life and what happens when we hope when we have faith and when God takes a central place in our story. We each have our own journey and our own baggage that goes with us on this journey. In this gospel story, Jesus tells his disciples to travel light. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to not bring two tunics. For me, traveling light is not something that I am skilled at. It is not one of my spiritual gifts. I'm someone that likes to be prepared for anything, for weather, for spontaneous adventures, travel delays, anything that I could possibly think of. So the one or two pairs of shoes that I have already shoved in my bag might not be right for that event I'm going to. So I try to shove in another pair just in case. So I bet you can only imagine what my bag is looking like as I'm preparing for the mission trip next week. I like to be prepared. But sometimes we can't be prepared. We can't be prepared for what God calls us to or puts in our life. So we have to be vulnerable, willing to adapt and learn along the way. Today, we have reached a milestone. Today is our last parking lot service, our last 8 a.m. service, as we transition back to in-person worship next week, and as we come back together to resume some kind of normalcy in our life and in our community of faith. While most of us are probably looking forward to this, I do want to acknowledge this past year and the numerous ways that we've had to adapt, be open to change, and learn along the way. When we first got the news in March of 2020 that everything was shutting down, we did our best with online worship only, offering a variety of online worship experiences, sing-along Sunday school videos to reach all ages. Pastor Brad and I even added in some cardboard cutouts in the congregation because we missed seeing everyone's faces so much. We learned. We adapted. Then we started offering parking lot services as the weather got nicer. And I'm really proud that we've been able to be consistent with that. Then later on, we added the 8 a.m. in-person service to begin the slow and thoughtful transition to where we are today. The daily devotions from Pastor Brad that never wavered over the past year and a half offered words of encouragement and hope and stability on a rocky journey. Friends in Christ, we have overcome several difficulties during this time, but I believe that we have come out stronger, remembering each time that we gather, no matter what that looks like now or in the future, that we are one as the body of Christ. We are stronger together, and we have never been alone. even when the world seemed to crumble and fall around us. This community is a family, 
And now we are stronger. We are healing. We can meet whatever challenge lies ahead because the Lord walks with us, equips us, and sends us out with the knowledge and power of the gospel to bring peace where there is uncertainty and love where there is fear. We all face these kinds of challenges in some form or another. But it is the people in our lives, not only the friends and family who support us during these challenges, but Jesus who walks with us, encouraging us to shake the dust off our sandals and move forward. We continue to learn, we continue to grow, we continue to be thankful that we have a God willing to be in the thick of it with us. We keep ministering to others and be in the hands of Jesus despite our challenges and adversity. Perhaps Jesus' idea of traveling light makes some sense after all. We already have everything we need to share the gospel with others. The 12 disciples were the hands, feet, legs, hearts, and minds of Jesus. And for Jesus to complete his mission of sharing love and gospel with others, he still needs hands, feet, legs, hearts, and minds. He needs people of all kinds to do his work. We have everything we need. So maybe we don't need that extra pair of shoes. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. We are church together, so let us confess our faith by words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, we are thankful that you walk with us. We pray that you continue to help us persist through the challenges of life, knowing that there is strength in community, and we find strength in your love, grace, and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of calling, you call each and every one of us to love one another. Help us to break down barriers in our community and show love to the lost, the least, the forgotten, and the oppressed. Help us to love as fiercely as God loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who frees us, today we give thanks for freedom in all ways. We are thankful that we live in a country where we can be who we are and live in the freedom of grace. Guide us to continue to protect the freedom and liberties of all of God's children, lifting up the beauty that comes in the diverse family of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you know all our hurts and sorrows. Give healing to all who need it in body, mind, and soul, and inspire us to bring your love and compassion to all who suffer. We ask you to be with those whose names are on our hearts and minds and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our country and for leaders around the world. Inspire them to lead with hearts of compassion and justice and help them work for peace. Where there is conflict and tension, bring peace and community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bless our partners in ministry, the churches of Boyceville, the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin, Lutheran Social Services, Lutheran Campus Ministry at Stout, Luther Park Bible Camp, and all the organizations that provide the community with resources and show the gospel in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our resilience during the pandemic. Help us to continue to come together to face any challenges. 
Remind us that we are stronger together. We give thanks for the unique ways we have still been able to share the gospel during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let's have our final God's peace honk. <laughs> Ushers will be coming around um, to collect offering, and um, if you are online and would like to donate, you can go to trinityboysville.com and follow the giving link on the homepage. Um, we're so thankful for your, for your continued support so we can continue to minister um, in challenging times. we missed you. Okay, I think we got everyone. Let us pray our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We conclude with our closing hymn, God Bless Our Native Land. for worship this morning and thank you for watching online and now let's have our thanks be to god final parking lot service honk to celebrate all that we've done and overcome this year thank you
you for joining us this morning. Be careful as you back out. And um, again, there's fellowship. So if you want to park on the edges and come on in, um, you're welcome to do that. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Enjoy your day. Thank you.